Okay, now we're going to begin looking at some practical circuit applications now that use capacitors and inductors. And we're going to begin by looking at the analysis of first order RC and RL circuits. So as we start moving into these topics later in the course, what you're going to find is more and more we're going to be transitioning from circuits that are, have strictly constant voltages and currents, DC, and now more and more we're going to be looking at time varying or as we've already said AC voltages and currents. So this is where we're going to be transitioning to more and more and looking at these types of time varying signals. Now, the question is, is why do we care about that? Well, mainly because the real world is AC. Things are always changing. They are changing with respect to time and that includes a lot of very useful and very interesting types of signals that we find in electrical engineering. Okay, so for example, audio, right? Stereo systems, music, voice. Video, another obvious choice. Turns out that electrical power. So what we get from Nashville Electric. Turns out that is a time varying signal. In fact, that's where the term AC originally came from, was from electrical power. And also things like, for example, Biomedical systems, so you know, EKG, ECG, etc. Our human bodies are constantly changing, and you're constantly basically generating their own types of biometric data that you want to be able to keep track of and record and measure. So, medical data. And I could go on and on with dozens of applications. But when you think about it, just about everything that interests us in this world are things that change over time. So we're going to start looking at circuits that deal with this idea of things changing over time. All right? So a few definitions here. First order RC, RL circuits. What do we mean by RC and RL? Well, there are going to be two classes of circuits we're going to look at. First will be the RC circuit which is going to be a combination of resistors and a capacitor. And then we're going to examine the RL circuit, which as you might guess, is composed of a resistor and an inductor. So as we're going to see, because of the duality in the mathematical equations that describe capacitors and inductors, we're also going to observe this same type of duality in these types of circuits. So we're going to be looking at the responses of those circuits. In other words, the voltages and currents that, that basically we can measure and calculate in those circuits over time. So we're going to look at three main categories. First, we're going to look at what's called the natural or transient response. Then we're going to look at what's called the forced or step response. And finally, we're going to look at the general response, which as we're going to see is nothing more than the combination or superposition of the natural and forced response. So 
So this is what we're going to look at. We're going to step through and look at each of these responses. And by the time we get to the general response, we'll have basically an overview of how to solve any of these types of circuits for any type of response. Now, finally thing, final thing to mention is first order. What do we mean by that? First order refers to the fact that all of the equations that we're going to develop that describe these responses are going to have the form of first order differential equations. In later courses, you will look at second order circuits, where you're going to look at circuits that can be described by second order differential equations. Here, we're going to keep the math a little bit simpler of what we're going to discuss next. All right, so it kind of gives us an overview of what we're going to be doing. Uh, next time, we will look at the natural or transient response of RC circuits.